Right, so hey everyone and welcome back to another budget photography video. Now when you buy a brand new camera, a lot of the time you'll get something called a kit lens. A kit lens is just a standard lens that you can use. It's usually a zoom lens. So for the 700D here, it is the standard 18 to 55 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6. Now when you go full frame, you don't get an 18 to 55. You get the 24 to 105 f4 continuous which means fully zoomed in and fully zoomed out it is an f4 which is really good for video because if i zoom this lens in now it goes from oh, wrong way it goes from an f3.5 to a 5.6 this is now f stop 5.6 and if i zoom back out again this is now an f4 so Canon originally released this lens in 2008 with an update in 2016. It features a nice metal EF mount. Yes, a metal mount with a weather sealed seal around the tip of the mount. It has eight aperture blades, a continuous F4 with image stabilization of up to three stops. So you can hand hold it with video. So that's really, really quite nice. It uses a pretty standard 77 millimeter filter thread on the front. So you'll be pretty okay with your filters, whether that's ND or whatever you really want. Now, yes, there are some pros and there are some cons of this lens. Now, one of the pros of this lens is the fact of its zoom range. It goes from 24 millimeters wide all the way into 105 millimeters now yes as i said it is an f4 but when fully zoomed in at 105 millimeters the aperture doesn't really matter so much because you're going to get that compression so if you do want to shoot portraits with this lens you are going to get some really 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 nice portraits especially in good lighting you have nice out of focus areas all all here all all here it'll look really nice nice bokeh and especially what helps with that is the fact that it is using eight, yes, count them, eight aperture blades. And what is probably my favorite feature of this lens is the fact that it is a Canon L lens, a Canon L lens, an L series. So it's a really, really, really nice looking lens. You're going to get some really gorgeous images at no matter what zoom range you decide to zoom into. Now, we can't talk about the pros without some of the cons. This is using a Canon USM motor and it's OK, but it's not really the best. It can be very, very slow to focus. Why don't we do a little um, little focusing test? Yeah. So I'll just. Um, so now I'm using the 24 to 105 and you can probably see it's struggling to focus. I don't know. I can't really see because I can't see the, <laughs> I can't see my monitor properly. I'm going to zoom in a bit to adjust the shots and it has actually focused on me quite nicely, which is um, quite weird, really, if I'm brutally honest. But if I get my phone oh, it's just lost focus. Let's see how long it takes. Shall we? It's just it's going to stand here. It's in autofocus mode. And there we go. So let's put my iPhone up and wait for that to focus. Eh, it's not too bad, but it's not really the best. It's not really focusing. Let's try my other phone. Hang on. So this will give it a bit of an easier test. This is a bigger phone. So let's just wait for that to focus. I'm still in focus. I'm still in focus. Come on. Has it focused on my phone yet? No? Or is it still on me? I think it's still, I don't think it's on me. It's tried to focus on the phone, but no, it's not gonna do it, is it? Let's go back to the other lens. So as you just saw, it can sometimes be very slow to focus. It didn't wanna focus on my Note 20 Ultra at all. And I've, I was still in the focal range, focus range, so it, it should have locked onto focus, but it just didn't want to focus. So you'll probably be using manual focus quite a lot, which is perfectly fine, but sometimes it's nice to use the autofocus. 
Now, because the Canon 24 to 105 is an L lens, it's got really nice glass in there. But the really nice glass is really quite heavy, if I'm brutally honest, especially when you put it with something like the Canon 5D, the Canon 6D or whatever, you are really carrying around a lot of weight. This is quite a quite a beast of a of a lens, really. You know, you uh, uh, don't hit anyone with it. I would not advise that at all. Now, my third and final con of this lens is the fact that it has an external zoom. So it gets bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller when you zoom in and out. Now, yes, it can be smaller in your bag if you have an external zoom, but it can kind of throw you off balance when you're, you know, you're like that. You're like, oh yeah, I've got this, you know, I've got this nice and balanced. I'll zoom in and oh, that's not literally going to happen, but it can just shock you quite a bit because it is then going to push the weight more over towards the front of the camera. And that's not a good thing. So keep an eye out for that. The zoom ring and focus ring feel nice and smooth. Even after all these years, they still twist round nicely and smooth. Little bit of fade in it, but it's not really noticeable unless you're really paying attention to it. So there's, there's a little bit of resistance in the focus. There's no resistance at all with this. It holds nicely. Now, one thing I will say is I, I shoulder mount this lens. So I have this on my camera and I have a shoulder rig for protests. And I've noticed a lot of lens travel. So if I have this just dangling off of my side, this lens will just drop out like that. And I'll be at 105 millimeters. And it's, it's not really a bad thing. It's just an inconvenience and an annoyance really. So there's that. But overall, the 24 to 105 is a nice lens and you will enjoy it. If you can find it cheap enough, that is. You can probably pick this lens up for about four, maybe 500 pounds. If you can find it less in a good condition, then definitely buy it. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next 